Hey, this is Matt, and in this tutorial, I'm going to give you a quick overview of mastering in Audacity. So I'm going to use an MP3 here, and I'm just going to drag it into the range window. And you can see that um, there are peaks that reach um, the maximum here, uh, but there's a lot of information um, that isn't that loud. And it's, it's a pretty dynamic track. Let's just give it a listen here. Okay, so um, if we want to master it, um, there are a couple things that you could do. Uh, if you have time, I mean, one of the best things to do is um, compare your track with something that you want it to sound like, and use and drop both of them, uh, both of the waveforms, into Audacity and look at them, and see which one is louder. Uh, and then uh, you might want to use the um, analyze function that we used in in the past. And you can, you know, plot the spectrum and um, use logarithmic and sort of look at and see what um, what frequencies stick out. Um, that's that if you have time. Um, and then this is where you do a little bit of EQ first. Maybe if there's a problem, something like this one looks like there's a spiky frequency right here around three kilohertz uh, that is painful to your ears. So you might want to dry, use an EQ and cut that out a little bit. Um, but for the most part, uh, if you have a limited time and a, a limited budget, you might just want to use a peak limiter to make sure that the uh, tune is loud enough, especially if it's going to be played next to something that is professionally mastered. That's usually the first thing that people notice is if it's loud enough. And remember from the loudness war, um, clip that I posted uh, a month ago or so, you know, a lot of modern music is arguably too processed and too um, squashed. It's been all of the um, these cool peaks that make it exciting and dynamic have been reduced uh, relative to the rest of the signal. The audio signals just look like big blocks, and I'll show you that in just a second. So, but basically, what you uh, want to do, um, if nothing else, is use a peak limiter. So we're going to use that awesome. Uh, George Young uh, peak limiter and used to be under W1 under effect but now it's over here uh, under George's name because he wants to get his name out there and when you select it you'll see this interface and this is basically a replica of a waves limiter that is pretty expensive uh, and it does uh, a lot of great things. So the default setting when you first boot it up, actually the threshold will be set at zero dB. And if I process it, notice that the waveform didn't change at all. And that's because you need to use that um, threshold control to um, make it do its work. So what I'm gonna do, go back here, and then I'm gonna drop the threshold back a few dBs. And we'll use the adaptive release um, and take a look at that. Now we have a bigger chunk of um, sound. And I advise you know, li listening to uh, a version with the adaptive release engaged and with it not engaged. And see if you can tell the difference and if one sounds better. Now use your ears. I'm not going to tell you what I think um, regarding that. Um, and you might want to experiment with dropping the, lim the limiter way back and see how much it really crushes the audio. So let's just listen to that same little snippet here. So it's nice and loud. Um, the first thing you start to notice is the drums start to disappear, if it is a music track. Uh, I'm going to undo that, and then I'm going to go back and uh, reapply. Let's see. Whoops. and really squash it, bring it way back. And <laughs> now this is what a lot of pop tunes look like when you drop them in. And let's listen to that same little clip. So it's sounding pretty weird now. The drums kind of breathe and come in and out of the mix. The guitar seems really loud and a lot of the dynamics are lost. So that's what you don't want to do. 
there's a happy medium um, experiment with it um, so uh, you know you might just want to set it back around two or three DBs and then uh, let's see go back one more time and go about how about there and when you're ready to export um, this is the other um, place that you can change the uh, the final export so this is how you know if you want to change export a uh, a WAV file for example and remember we started with an mp3 you can select WAV or you can select AIF which are both PCM file types but uh, in this assignment I'm being pretty specific of, about what I want um, you know some people and in future assignments, you might have to do a 24-bit PCM. Then you'd have to go to um, other uncompressed files. And then, aha, you'll find that a 24-bit PCM is an option there. So I'm actually going to go back and export this as a WAV file at 16 bits PCM. And I'm, we're just going to put it on the... Uh, the desktop and this is what they used to call a red book uh, audio which is the the cd quality standard which was 16 bits pcm um i haven't heard that term in quite a while but uh there you go have fun with it